Hey y'all, so today we're going to look at a kind of iconic, super tactical 80s gun, the Colt Delta Elite 10mm. This one happened to be built in 2012. So it's still 80s cool, but it's 2012. Um, basically what it is, is Colt, for anybody that knew the history, Colt wanted to get in on the 10 mil game, and the Bren 10 kind of, kind of, you know, didn't work out right, but Colt decided to uh, do it their own way, and they came out with this. So what they did was they took a standard 1911 government size and changed the barrel, changed the spring, uh, finagled a little bit, and bam, Delta Leap. So uh, we'll go over the features a little bit, go over some of the changes that I've made, and talk about the uh, reliability and all that. So starting with features, uh, I'll start with the biggest thing. Uh, comes with these really nice wraparound grips that are the rubber. Really nice grips. I ended up changing mine uh, because of I just wanted to have a little more control and I like the wood grips, so I changed mine. But comes with really nice grips, right? Um, Pretty much not a whole lot out that's uh, like super fancy on it. Like it's a pretty, it's not, I don't want to say bare bones, but it's a pretty standard 1911. You know, it doesn't have uh, any weird attachments or anything on it. So uh, standard three dot Colt sights, what you would expect, right? Uh, trying to get it to focus. You got like a nice sight picture there, right? Uh, bobbed hammer, standard GI beaver tail, right? Uh, nice, as usual, with Colts, what you would expect. Nice, crisp safety. That's one of the things I'm real fond of with the Colts is I've got a couple of them, and their safety is always real nice and crisp, which is nice because I've shot a bunch of different 1911s, and I've s shot some of them where the safety can be kind of like lolly-da, lolly I guess, like real loose. And while it's never happened, there's always the risk of, what if it disengages while carrying or re-engages, you know? What if I bump it and it re-engages while shooting? So, never had that happen with a Colt, but real nice about that. Um, trigger, trigger is, you know, again, standard single action Colt. What do you expect? Real nice, like little tiny bit of take up before you hit the wall and then crisp. So, uh, features on this, uh, you know, again, five inch barrel government 1911 they really did not have to change a whole lot to get uh, the delta elite so comes with the standard eight plus one magazine from the factory the ribs are there of course to help center the 10 millimeter cartridge because the uh, obviously the 45 cartridge is a little bit bigger so and basically it's a standard 1911 magwell so for anybody Curious, like I was, yes, a standard 1911 magazine and 45 will fit into this and click in. Of course, it just won't work in chamber because, you know, you're not going to fit it in. But, yes, you can fit any 1911 magazine in there because, again, standard 1911. So, that's kind of the features of the gun. Reliability is really good with this gun. In the very beginning, I did have to kind of give it a break-in period. The first 200 rounds, uh, it was like seizing up because the frame rails were pretty tight tolerance, and uh, it was just seizing up on me. So what I ended up doing was I actually, after it, I, it was getting better, but I wanted to kind of speed up the process because for anybody that's bought 10 millimeter, you know that it can be kind of expensive, and I hadn't gotten all my reloading equipment set up yet. So... I wanted to try and uh, speed up the break-in process, so I literally brought it home and just sat there and hand-cycled it for about an hour in front of the TV, and the next time I took it out to the range, I uh, had no issues. So, uh, as far as reliability, pretty good. Now, the only thing that I will say is the jury's out on the Delrin guide rod that they put in and uh, they put a plastic guide rod in instead of the uh, standard metal one that they were using. Uh, Colt claims that it's for, uh, basically it would break instead of the gun breaking for if like someone was putting like hot rod cartridges into the gun and uh, it would break instead of the gun. Like kind of, kind of like a fail safe, like letting the person know, hey, you're 
bashing your gun to pieces. Um, I ended up having to get rid of that because, and I'm going to make a separate video on talking about running hot ammo in this gun since there is a lot of debate on the internet, but I did end up replacing that because I did notice the gun start to malfunction because the guide rod had kind of like deformed and mushed out, but um, I was running a little bit hotter ammo than factory, so uh, that was the only thing I ran into, and on the internet, it seems like everybody, the first, the second they buy this gun, they rip that out and put in a uh, metal one. So, for, if you're thinking about buying this gun, that's a decision you'll have to make after shooting it. If you want to keep the plastic guide rod or change to a metal one, I changed to a metal one. But I'm quite sure if you were just shooting normal factory ammo, ammo you probably won't have any issues. But, as for, like I said, other than that, reliability really good on this gun. As far as accuracy, I was actually pretty impressed with this gun, or I should say I was pretty impressed with what I could do with this gun. Um, really nice grouping at 10 yards, right? Couple little, you know, flyers out there, but I was pretty happy with that group, and that was with a 200 grain bullet that I had worked up. And uh, like I said, really, really happy with the accuracy on this gun. Uh, that single action trigger, really makes it easy to get nice groups. Um, I was shooting Glocks for a, a while and going from a Glock trigger, which, you know, not terrible, but definitely not single action, back to this, it was really, it was really a nice transition. And like I said, uh, the I know some people that try and they say they got to do trigger jobs on these. I would not mess with this trigger at all because it's, uh, it, like I showed, it's a nice, clean, uh, crisp break. Like, like I said, you've got that little bit of a take up right there, right? And then done. So, like I said, accuracy real good, reliability pretty good. Um, I did make a few changes, like I said, and I'm going to do a separate video on all that. But overall, I think it's a really nice gun. It's a pretty iconic gun. Um, you know, as far as as far as 10 millimeter handguns go, I know there are lighter guns out there. But for me, I like having a little bit of the weight, just because 10 millimeters a little bit stouter than like 45 and stuff like that. But overall, I think it's a pretty cool gun. Um, definitely something I've wanted for kind of a while, and I'm glad I have one. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them, and have a good day.